Good morning, class. Uh, today is October 19th, and so this is the video for October 20th. And um, I'm not going to appear for a minute because uh, I want to retain my focus. And I want to use the projector to go over homework four first because we haven't done that yet. And um, so uh, I'm here. Um, I'll, uh, uh, let's see if I can raise my hand a little bit. There I am. Okay, so uh, let's go over homework four. So homework four, you were basically supposed to determine um, for a field of uranium dirt, basically, let's call it dirt, uh, with a certain part per million uranium. You were supposed to figure out at what part per million it was profitable to mine. And the, um, the idea is then that from this chart from Scientific American, that lists the amount of uranium on the planet at various parts per million, we can determine how much there is. And, and so, I mean, the, um, the idea was to uh, use coal as an example here. Uh, so, so basically, uh, if it is profitable to mine low-grade coal, now the lowest-grade coal has uh, 10,000 BTU per kilogram. And so if um, a kilogram of dirt um, has 10,000 BTU, I mean, the, the theory behind this answer is that, well, then it's um, profitable to mine. And, you know, we, we'll talk about that in a second, but, but so basically what that would mean is that if you... Um, if you had a kilogram of dirt with 30 parts per million, or 0 0.00003 uranium, then um, if you took 380 million uh, BTU per kilogram and you multiplied it times that, you would get 10,000 BTU. So at 30 parts per million, a kilogram of dirt has 10,000 BTU. I mean, it's you know pretty simple, really. And, and so, uh, you know, going up to this chart here then, um, which if I can, can maybe show both things at the same time. Okay, well, let's go up to the chart here. So 30 parts per million, that puts you uh, somewhere in black shales. And, and so let's say, you know, and people got different answers, I think, depending on, on what they use. Uh, but let's say we, we have half of the black shales. So um, the tons then available, a uh, ton is a, uh, with an E in the end is 1,000 kilograms. So that's the black shales, and that's the next one up, and the next one up, and you add them all up, and it comes to 2.22 times 10 to the 10 tons, uh, which there's 1,000 kilograms in a ton, so that's 2.22 times 10 to the 13. And so if you multiply that times 380 million, you get 8,440,000 quats. So uh, the point being that um, by this calculation anyway, um, we are saying that it would be profitable to mine black shales uh, of which, uh, according to this reference, there are uh, two times 10 to the 10 tons of uranium available to mine. Now, um, that was how we were supposed to do the problem. Uh, you could argue that, well, it, okay, so um, when you mine coal, right, low-grade coal has 10,000 BTU per kilogram. If, um, you know, when you mine coal, you're basically just digging it up and putting it in a, in a container or something, um, some uh, shipping container, and, and that's it. I mean, there's not much really any processing involved. Whereas, of course, if you're mining uranium at 30 parts per million, uh, you can imagine there's probably a lot of processing involved uh, in taking that 30 parts per million and getting rid of all the dirt so that you're just left with the uranium. Uh, so, um, you know, this, this estimate is um, uh, on the high side. Uh, you know, it could be that it's a factor of 10 higher uh, that has to be... Uh, there, and in which case it would put you sort of somewhere up here in, um, in around, uh, you know, volcanic deposits range. 
which is you know going to be a factor of 10 lower. So even though if it's a factor of 10 lower, you drop a zero off of this number here, and you're still at around a million quads. And, and so that's, this is saying that basically um, a million quads divided by uh, 100 quads per year that is what, what we need. So that's 10,000 years. So, the, so there's sort of on the order of 10,000 years um, of nuclear power if we get all of our energy from nuclear power, which puts us you know, far enough into the future that, that we probably um, you know, don't really need to uh, worry about this too much. I'm going to adjust my, well, no, I, I'll, I'll just leave it. Okay, so, so the first part of the problem is that, uh, or the first problem uh, of this was, okay, yes, there's definitely uh, a lot of uranium, uh, enough to get what we need from, from a long, long time. Now the next one is, 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 is asking the question about the, uh, the nuclear waste issue. And this question is so, uh, sort of like, um, well, if, um, if the garbage man start, stops picking up your garbage, okay, how long could you pile it up in your backyard? <laughs> Which, <laughs> it's kind of like that uh, in a sense, although, um, you know, as you can imagine, if you had to pile up your garbage in your backyard um, forever, uh, you um, would probably do it very carefully and get a trash compactor and stuff like that and, and sort of start, you know, real kind of thinking about how you do it rather than just haphazard. And that's what they do is that um, currently all nuclear waste is stored at the power plant. And, um, and so you were supposed to, you know, figure out how long that can continue. And, and so, you know, this was an internet research problem. And so, for example, um, this is the Hope Creek generating station. And um, you can kind of uh, so you go on Google and you go up here and, and there they are up there in, in this uh, sort of parking lot area. So first of all you get the idea that well um, here's the entire nuclear power plant you know it's pretty big um, and they've set aside you know kind of a parking lot you know here's here's for scale here's here's a parking lot right uh, for the for the plant and and so it's like they they, they said okay uh, we'll take one of the parking lots and we'll make that, that's our storage site where we build up our nuclear waste. Um, and here's a, uh, a zoom in, oops, Let's see if I can get it to, okay, so here's, here's, a, here's a zoom in of that parking lot and you can see that uh, they've arranged a few concrete pads there, uh, and I guess this is blacktop, and, and you can see, and this picture was, is from a few years ago, Actually, I should go back and, and, and look at this because I have evidence here of what it was like. Um, I think this was taken in 2008 or 10, I forget. Uh, but basically, uh, you can see the canisters here. There's, basi there's concrete canisters that they, uh, I don't know why this one's down here, uh, but, but that they uh, put the uh, nuclear waste in. Now, uh, the nuclear waste first goes into a pool of water where it sits for about five years. Uh, for it to cool off, and then and then they arrange it in um, in those cylindrical sorry uh, those cylindrical casks uh, that are shown. And uh, so what I did there uh, there's this link here storenuclearfuel.com that tells you all about you know for each site. Uh, and so you can look up here um, uh, how many um, uh, how many casks per year uh, are, are being made. And here's for Oyster Creek. Uh, the Oyster Creek storage system is a little bit different. Um, the casks are arranged in sort of so a sideways arrangement. Uh, here's the Three Mile Island plant, um, or not the Three Mile Island, the Limerick plant. And um, so if you, if you go through you find out that, okay, there's these statements that, um, like here, as if um, there were 16 dry casks. Okay, so from 2006 for Hope Creek, all right, until 2011, uh, they had made 16 dry casks. 
and and they tell you um, how big the pad is and how many it can store because they're spaced you know they're not like just stacked right next to each other and so you 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 work it out um, and for each of the storage systems like this is this is the Hope Creek uh, this is you know I did four of them here it's about a thousand square feet per year so a thousand square feet is an area um, about um, uh, 35 by 35 feet and and so you know that's how many how much area they require uh, on an annual basis and that converts into uh, about 1 50th of an acre and so if you know we said we could have 50 acres I mean, like right now they don't have 50 acres but let's say that's what we uh, decided to do um, the answer I got was uh, 2,120 years. <coughs> so um, that's the answer, and and so you know, right now um, for for a nuclear power plant, and and 50 acres per site is is pretty reasonable, really, for for a size plant, um, you know, uh, that they use. That's that's maybe 10 percent of the size of a uh, of a nuclear power plant uh, retained for storage that you know this could go on for you know a couple thousand years and now um, okay would the casks last for that long okay would they have to be repaired those are good questions um, this is just saying that this is this is you know sort of a baseline of what the practice can can do and now how long do you need to well okay so um, if you look at a chart here, this is basically saying how radioactive spent fuel is, and and this is kind of a relative scale, where um, uh, one here, um, I forget what the what one means here. Uh, Oh, one one is uh, the the um, the radioactivity of natural uranium. So so basically, this is going back from you know basically really radioactively incredibly hot uh, spent fuel rods to um, you know base what it's like you know digging it out of the ground, and in two thousand years it will go down in radioactivity from approximately um, you know sort of six to seven thousand times natural uranium to to somewhere around a hundred times so you know the question is well is that enough time um, and and I and I suppose as an engineer what I think is that well maybe um, maybe it's um, enough time to figure out what to do about it now also this practice is per nuclear plant so as if if for example in your final project you say well we're going to have you know three times as many nuclear power plants that we do today w w I mean it, the number is still the same because each plant you would say would have you know this amount of storage available and and so the the point of the homework is that based upon the availability of nuclear of uranium and the capability to store nuclear waste on the plant side, on the plant site, um, this practice can go on for quite a bit. Okay, so that's it for homework four. And uh, what I'm going to do now is um, go to the board and turn off the projector. Lights on. And I'm out of focus. Um, but let me see if I can fix that.
Okay, we're in business. Okay, so again, um, this is the video for um, October 20th. And uh, before we uh, continue um, and go over homework five, uh, so uh, today or tomorrow, however you think of it, uh, we'll be going over, um, um, you know, biomass fuels, and then 10:22 will be uh, introduction. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to start on heat engines. And then the following week, 1027, uh, review for quiz two. And then 1029 is the quiz. Okay, so um, that's, that's our schedule. And um, fuels. Um, and I, I think that's what we'll get through. So uh, it, it, it may seem a little disjointed that we're going to include a little bit about heat engines in, in the second quiz, but I thought about that and actually I think it's very reasonable because um, we've, we've been doing problems all along with uh, looking at you know pressure uh, and change in volume. Uh, you're, you had a homework problem on that. And so um, I, I think that we can we can get away with the with a couple of questions, uh, simple questions on on heat engine. So that's the schedule going forward uh, for the next couple of weeks. All right, and let's. So first, do homework five. And so, for homework five. Um, Problem one was the solar cell problem, and um, you know what you learned in homework, and uh, is that the VOC. Now it's VOC for the cell, and so that was very important. That's equal to EB over E minus uh, KT over E uh, of A over L, A over IL. So that's the, the open circuit voltage for a solar cell, and uh, it's, the, it's the maximum voltage um, that, um, uh, that the cell can deliver. And a lot of you, you know, got, I mean, so I tried to telegraph that, I mean, it's, it's pretty easy to think about this problem because this is, you know, basically EV over E minus some constant times uh, te temperature. And of course that's in Kelvin. This is in Kelvin. And, and so you, you, you can group all this stuff together. Uh, you don't really need to, to think about it. Now we'll talk about, we'll talk about uh, the effect of that in a little bit. But basically it means if you plot VOC versus temperature, it starts at EV over E. And remember EV in electron volts is volts in, in volts, same number. And it goes down linearly according to that formula with temperature. And so what you were told was for the panel, VOC was 22 uh, volts. All right, now this formula is for the cell. And, and so you first have to divide by 22. So VOC of the cell, this is panel is equal to 22 over the number of cells, 36 cells. So that's equal to um, uh, 0.61 volt. And so at uh, 25 C, or 298 Kelvin, that number is 0.61. And it starts at one because that was the um, the voltage I, or the uh, the energy I gave you 
So then basically, you just work out. I mean, I'm not going to go through the the uh, the eighth breed algebra. Um, that this is equal to one minus um, zero point zero zero one three. So now you you take and um, I mean basically you know VOC of the panel is equal to 36 times VOC of the cell. Um, so that starts at 36 volts and at uh, at 298 try to align it 298 Kelvin. That goes to um, 22. So if you think about it, you could do it the other way, where you just start with 36, and so basically um, that that works out to then uh, 36 minus 0.047 t. Okay, so for the panel, you lose 0.047 volts for every degree Kelvin which is the same as every degree Celsius. And, and so uh, the answer is um, 0.047 volts per Celsius, because it's the same cel the, you know, the Celsius and Kelvin in terms of the difference. And um, uh, that works out then to um, 0.047 over 22 is, um, 0.21 percent per degree. So, you, so you you lose voltage at the rate of of, uh, of a fifth of a percent per centigrade. Um, and I was able to look up a commercial panel. Okay, so you'll see this when I when I turn it. Uh, a real. Let me see if I'm getting this. A real panel. when I look 0.36% per degree. So the formula gave us 0.21, but the real answer is 0.36. Well, why is that? Well, okay, so why is that is something none of you know, even the ones that have taken 340 because they're not taught this. This goes down with temperature itself. The, the barrier energy is a function of temperature. Now, why that is, is a complicated question um, that you really have to do real solid state physics to understand. It has to do with the fact that um, as temperature increases, the, um, the crystal lattice expands a little bit. I mean, you can kind of think of it that way. The crystal lattice expands a little bit, so the bonds get a little bit longer. And so the barrier to ripping an electron off of a bond gets smaller. So you can think of it that way pretty simply. Um, it's just thermal expansion of the crystal results in um, the, the barrier to ripping an electron off the bond getting small, a little bit smaller with temperature. So EB goes down with temperature. So the actual reduction uh, of voltage with, with, uh, with temperature, with, and concurrently practically about the same reduction of power with temperature, is is really closer to about a third of a percent. All right, so let's think about that a little bit. Okay, you, that's a that's a good handy number to think about. Okay, you you lose voltage and hence power at the rate of about a third of a percent per centigrade. So if your panel goes up in temperature by ten centigrade, you've lost over three percent, three point you know around three and a half percent. So it's significant, okay? I mean, because a panel can get pretty hot in the sun. So um, what do you do about it? Well, not much. I mean, you could imagine a cooling system for the panel. Uh, there's been various research, including by myself, um, you know, trying to look at some way uh, of, of sort of naturally using um, a cooling system to cool the panel to keep the temperature low so it retains its high um, uh, uh, power, but the thing is that whatever cooling system you would implement would draw power itself, and so um, uh, you know it's, it's sort of a losing argument, and and so basically, and plus it would cost money to to make it 
and so people just accept the fact that uh, it's going to lose power. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means, for example, um, uh, in, in, the, in the middle of summer, a panel has less efficiency because um, it gets so hot. So panels are more efficient in the winter, uh, but at the same time, in the winter, there's less sun. So, you know, uh, you still get more power, more energy in the summer, but you get less power. Now, um, going back to our formula here, you can see where IL is. And so <clears throat> basically, remember, this is a positive quantity. So A is bigger than IL. All right, it kind of has to be. It's like the, uh, the barrier thing. And, and so um, this is ln of you know, 100 or something like that. And so as IL gets bigger, this alpha gets smaller. Okay, so of course it works out that as you shine more light on it, you get a little bit higher voltage, but it goes logarithmically, so not so much. Um, you know, and the ratings that you see for panels are at a standard, uh, basically full sunlight. All right, so um, that was problem one. And let me see if I can do problem two over here. So, so problem two, check my focus. All right, looks good. Um, problem two, problem two and three. So let's, uh, so problem two is, okay, you have 10 acres. All right, if you grew up on a farm, you know what, how big an acre is. Um, but uh, the question is um, solar or bio. And so it, it leads us into our question of, of uh, it leads us into our discussion of, of biofuels and stuff, or biomass. And so the question between these two problems is, what do you do with your 10 acres if you want to make money making energy? Now, um, the reality is that if you have 10 acres of arable land, uh, economically you would grow food. So, you know, that's, that's always, you know, but this is saying, okay, let's say in the future we have to make energy. Which way do we go? And, and so for solar, you were, meant to, you were supposed to figure out, um, you know, here's the sun. And so basically you want to arrange your solar panels such that um, they're not shaded. And so you have to go through some uh, geometry because basically um, in the winter it's lower. And so you had to work out that number. I, I won't go through all the, uh, the geometry here. It'll be in the handout. Um, clearly, it's something you need to you know think about a little bit. Um, but basically, um, you can work out that uh, for these were one by one meter panels, or one yeah one by one meter panels, that um, that this distance had to be uh, greater than or equal to. Uh, 0.778 meters, and so it worked out in the long direction. Um, you could get um, uh, do, 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 the number is um, okay. Yeah, 200. Um, right. Um, there could be 101 rows. Okay, that they had to be spaced that part, that you get 100 in rows um, in the 10 acres and, and in the other direction. And so each row could have, uh, because there you can just tile them up going into the board. You could have uh, 200, uh, it worked out to um, 201. A row, and so that works out to how many panels you can put in ten acres is um, twenty thousand three hundred and one panels total. And and so if you um, if you went through the numbers, then I said they were twenty percent efficient, so zero point two kilowatts per panel because each one is a meter squared, times 201, 
um, times 4.75, okay, times 365 gives you 7,044,200 kilowatt hours per year. Okay, so 7 million kilowatt hours, that's what that, um, that 10 acre array will produce. And I said that, that you're going to get 5 cents uh, at 5 cents per kilowatt hour. All right, that works out to, you're going to make um, 352,000 dollars per year. Okay, so um, 200, whatever. So that's pretty good. Um, three, you know, over three hundred thousand dollars per year. Now, you know, I mean, do you actually get that much? Well, you know, it depends on on whether you, whether you have some inverter losses and stuff like that. But you know, I mean, you know, around three hundred thousand dollars per year. Um, you know, baseline ca uh, calculation. That's pretty good. All right, now let's do the bio. So. <laughs> It was funny last night, people were working on this problem. So now we're saying instead, okay, here's our 10 acres. And you plant trees. Um, uh, 15 feet apart. And, um, and you coppice them, which basically means that you, you cut down their branches every year to, to sell for firewood. And, and so basically, you know, that works out to, with that spacing, you could put in 1,936 1, trees. And I, I have a website that I looked up, and, and what I looked up is for, for a popular tree. Uh, with, by cutting down its branches, uh, you can get five cords per year per tree and so five times um, um, per acre sorry per acre right one acre of coppice wood uh, for hybrid populars will, will yield five cords per year per acre yeah it's not five cords per tree uh, you can work out what that is per tree, but basically uh, times 10 acres. So it kind of wasn't a problem with the tree. Uh, there might be other ways to answer this question, uh, 50 cords per year. Now, uh, a cord, right, is, um, uh, a cord is, is um, you know, it's a unit of volume, which is kind of funny because if you stack your wood differently, you get different <laughs> amounts of cords. But, but basically, you're supposed to stack it pretty well, as well as you can. And I think it's a 4 by 4 by 8 foot bin. Um, but anyway, uh, the price per cord, $200 is, is, is pretty generous, actually, these days. Um, times 200, 10,000. Okay. So that's our comparison. So if you wanted to devote your 10 acres to energy production, if you devoted, if you if you installed solar panels, and so you devoted it to sort of solar farming, um, you can get you know $300,000 per year uh, is is your revenue. Um, and of that 300,000, probably there's very little operating cost if you think about it. I mean. You don't really have to do much maintenance on the panels. Whereas um, here, uh, if you decide I'm going to grow firewood, $10,000. So a lot less. Um, and this, you know, probably, you know, $10,000, um, you know, there's there's costs associated with that. You have to cut down the branches and stuff. And, and so, you know, that's your top line. Your bottom line is lower. Here, uh, your, your top line is, I mean, I'm... I mean, I, I imagine there's maintenance on, on, on a solar array right this large, but, but uh, I don't think there's as much, um, a much uh, as much percentage revenue that has to go into uh, maintenance. So 
I mean, this is, is much bigger than that. Um, and, um, and so, you know, that's the route to go if you want to produce a lot of energy and make a lot of money. Now, of course, your investment is enormous here. Um, okay, you have, you have panels. Uh, each one is a 200 watt panel in this example. And the rule of thumb is, is kind of $3 uh, per, per watt uh, panel uh, to put up. I mean, it, the, the panel itself is maybe a dollar. But basically, um, we had here 20,000 uh, panels. And so uh, each one here at 200 watts is, is about $600 per panel to put up. So 600 times 20,000, um, so, so basically that's um, uh, 6 times 20 is 120, um, 0, 0, and then add two zeros, all right. Uh, yeah, I think that's about right. It will cost you $12 million to put up this, this array. So um, I think I did that right. $600 per panel to put up uh, for 200 watt panels. Uh, sounds right. 20,000. Uh, I think I did that calculation right, yeah. Um, so, I mean, the point being, you can work it out. It costs a lot more to put this up, all right. Um, whereas this, you sort of, you know, you plant some trees. It doesn't cost a lot, um, pretty minimal. So, um, you know, Devoting acreage to solar electric production or biomass, essentially firewood is the simplest example of biomass that I can think of, where you can readily sell it um, because you can readily sell, you know, $200 a, uh, a cord is pretty uh, good price, but you, you could get that. Um, it's still very small. And the real thing here is that um, having 10 acres of land devoted to farming you need to get a lot more than a top line of ten thousand dollars. I can tell you that. I mean, that's that's not not going to cut it. Uh, if you you know you have equipment to maintain and stuff like that. I mean, what a real farmer would do is, is grow corn or, or something like that. So this problem is uh, okay. So that leads us into our discussion uh, today, which is biomass, and. Um, And I'm, I'm, we're first going to do biomass. Now, biomass is, you know, like firewood. <laughs> I mean, but uh, you burn for the, the heat content. All right, and. Um, um, So, so the first question is um, energy crops. I'll put crops in. I mean, it's not really. It really is crops. I mean, the idea here is: will we start growing uh, uh, plants um, in order to utilize their energy? And the simplest way is, is the, the example of problem three: utilizing, um, you know, basically burning the wood. Now, um, I'm not going to put up the projector again, but right now, currently, um, this is only ethanol. There's a, there's a little bit of biodiesel kind of sprinkled in, but not really. Yeah, um, uh, currently, uh, the only energy crop is, is growing corn for ethanol. And um, we could go into a lot of the details there, but uh, as to whether it makes sense to, to grow corn for ethanol, we'll talk about it in a little bit. But um, we're first going to, you know, uh, step back from the problem and think more along the lines of 
uh, of problem three. Now, if you if you if you look at and I don't want to lose my focus, but I printed out the electric chart uh, that I updated the, the notes with, and you can see that um, electrical production would now. Wh what do you use biomass for? Primarily to generate electricity in a, in a nuclear. I mean, in a, in a power plant where you burn uh, the biomass, and you can see there that it has not changed for decades. Uh, and if you go to the website where that this information came from, you see that that wood is is really, um, you know, other other than than ethanol. Uh, currently. Uh, the only biomass is uh, waste. So, so basically waste in some form. It could be waste in the form of discarded pallets or railroad ties or, or any sort of burnable material. Um, uh, there, there could be waste, I mean, I grew up uh, on, a, on an orchard farm and, and you would periodically rip up the trees and um, and that could be used uh, to burn for fuel. Um, but basically, no one is growing a crop, particularly except for ethanol, uh, for, for energy pur purposes. So there's some form of waste. It could be, you know, um, uh, methanol generated from landfills. You know, there's, there's just, you know, there's all sorts of waste. Um, and the thing is, you know, waste is essentially free. And going back to our problem three, uh, the example of firewood, Pretty much, I mean, my experience is that um, if you call, if someone puts an ad in the paper to sell you firewood, it's they probably got it for free, so to quote. Uh, and they, meaning it could be, for example, um, a person who um, trims or cut down, cuts down trees for a living. Uh, you know, a tree person that uh, you know, a homeowner calls up and says, "I need to get rid of this tree. Please cut it down." And and so he might then take that wood. And resell it as firewood. So, so um, you know, uh, all the firewood in the, and uh, you know, no one's going out and growing trees to make firewood, as you can kind of see from problem three, is is not not something that someone's going to going to do. Um, so the question is, okay. So this is in parentheses here. Um, the question is would we start growing energy crops and there's a lot of people that think about this and so the point of the notes is to is to simply go through the numbers and the numbers are are this the numbers are in the US um, there's uh, approximately um, um, 460 million acres that are what's called uh, arable, meaning you can farm on it. So um, there's 460 million acres. Uh, remember, that was 10 acres in our problem three. So there's a, there's a lot of area in principle that you can farm. And, and let's say we, we divide by two. And, you know, because we leave for farm, for, for food, half. Okay, so that gives us 230 million acres that we could grow for energy. And, and the usual thing is uh, that people is switchgrass. Switch. You know, it's basically a, a, a fast growing plant. Um, can yield uh, about 20, you know, BTU per kilogram. So it's basically dried plant matter, um, and um, you can get, um, where is it here, oh, um, 15 uh, tons, and this is uh, pound tons, 2,000 pounds, um, per acre per year. And and so if you work if you multiply all this together so that's that's fourteen thousand kilogram per acre per year. But the answer is then 
um, 21,000 uh, kilogram BTU per kilogram times 14,000 kilogram per acre uh, per year. And so the answer is, uh, and, and, and uh, let's go ahead and do the multiplication times 260 million, 230 million. Did I, oh, um, hmm. did I divide by <laughs> two wrong? Uh, 400, yeah, I divided by wrong. Okay, let's use 260 million. <laughs> Never noticed that in the notes. That should be 230 million, and, and if we assume half. Uh, so it works out to uh, 78 quads. So we can we can um, we can we can we could produce 78 quads of biomass if we really got into it. Now. What's the flip side, though? The flip side is that, and I won't, in the interest of time, I won't go through all the numbers here, but the flip side is that um, it takes energy to farm, okay? And I work out in the notes here how much energy that is. And, and basically it works out to um, um, the total U.S. farming energy. Or, well, maybe it's well, uh, power, really. Is 1.4 quads per year. Now, um, that number comes, you know, that's a bottom-up number of calculating, um, you know, how much energy, you know, how much diesel to run a tractor and electricity to run irrigation pumps and everything else. But it kind of makes sense. You know, you consider that, um, that, that um, the U.S. uses, you know, 100 quads per year. Um, that 1.4 of that grows into growing our food. Seems like a reasonable number. You know, 1.4% of our energy is to grow our food. Kind of makes sense. All right, so we can we can figure out, okay, the 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 biomass from growing food. Now here that's kind of a complicated question because we don't use all we don't eat all the biomass. But you can figure out like if you took all the biomass. Now, currently, like, like ethanol, which we'll talk about in a little bit, is um, you only use the, the ears of corn. You don't use the stalks and stuff like that. But um, you can work out that the biomass we currently produce through farming is uh, about three quads per year. And that tells you that if we're growing biomass, it takes about half as much as you uh, produce to make it. And that means that this number, okay, it's going to take uh, half of that, or 39 quads input. Now, so this has to go to that if we did that. And, and so that's what you have to think about in your final project. You're going to have a number here, okay, for biomass. There, that number will be in your final project. But if you make that number big like that, okay, the, 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 the project file has a little bit of a... Um, actually, I could try and fix it. I mean, what it would mean is that, okay, you would, you would have to have, you know, that much more, um, you know, natural gas, electricity, et cetera. So it's, it's not a losing proposition, but it's kind of close to. 
Now, um, let's talk briefly about ethanol. Uh, and we'll, we'll continue this in the next lecture. Ethanol is, um, it's like ethane, okay? Uh, in the sense that there's two carbon atoms. Remember N equals two, the alkane ethane, H, 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 okay? Except you put an OH on one. Now, what, what is ethanol? It's the stuff you drink. It's the same thing. Um, uh, so you can drink that. And basically, um, that um, oops, plus 202, and I work out the numbers in the book 302, sorry, uh, goes to 2CO2 plus 3H2O plus, and I'll just work through the numbers here, uh, 28,000 BTU per kilogram. Now remember, gasoline was about um, 43,000. So, um, uh, so we're going to end the lecture here, and I'll pick up on ethanol next time. But basically, when you burn ethanol for fuel, you get a lot less energy. And, and that leads to um, a sort of a, a, a cap on how it's being. That and other things leads to a cap on how much of it we can use in our country and our cars. Uh, and next time we'll we'll go over that. Um, and but the basically, currently, 10% of of uh, of uh, vehicle fuel in the U.S. is ethanol. Okay, so we'll pick up on ethanol next time. We'll go through ethanol. We'll do a little bit on heat engines. That'll figure out exactly how I want to do that. And, and, and then uh, next week will be the review and the quiz.